Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Yes, I'm going to kill your friend, and I'll do it very, very slow. I'm going to inflict much pain. You're going to hear a guy beg for his life, lady, because he betrayed Nani Vitali. That's the car I want. Don't worry, there will be no bloodshed. Don't worry. There will be no bloodshed. Police! Police! Rat and louse is off black! Go on! Die. Go on! Ah! You afraid of me? Are you? Let her alone! You're not afraid of me? No! Let me go! Let me go! Hold it! Take the girls along. We'll need them as hostages. Inspector Santini. <laughs> so nice to see you, Inspector Santini. <laughs> You shoot him for you crazy. I'm sorry, I lost my temper. You're lucky you don't get a bullet in the brain. Check outside. I told you no one ever comes here. Hi. Ah! Shut up. He needs a doctor. You gotta leave him like this. Let me go. And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for Mad Dog Killer. It's this number 16 in the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Let's jump over to the 88 Films website to see what they say about this movie. So it says, Nanny Vitali, played by Helmut Berger, and his band of lunatics escape from prison and embark on a violent crime spree across Italy. Caught in this madman's web of destruction is the beautiful Juliana. Um, who is under the protection of Police Chief Santini. Having survived a run-in with Vitali and his crew, Santini must do all he can to prevent his key witness from becoming another victim. But Vitali has plans of his own for taking care of Santini. Inspired by the crimes of an infamous mobster, Renato Valacenza, Mad Dog Killer is a deliriously violent police 
Polistichy, I can never pronounce that word, police procedural movie, uh, that pushes the limits of on screen brutality and is a must have for any self respecting fan of Italian cult cinema. 88 Films are proud to unveil this iconic classic, uncut and remastered in glorious 4K for the first time ever. The special features on the disc a new 4K transfer from the original technoscopic negatives restored English soundtrack, restored Italian soundtrack with newly translated English subtitles and a restoration featurette. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's the, the setup. Uh, yeah, this is a first time watch for me. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I had watched the trailer in advance and the trailer looked gonzo. It looked absolutely fucking nuts. And yet the movie kind of follows in a similar suit, to, to be fair. Even though this is a kind of police procedural Italian genre movie, we don't spend nearly as much time with Santini as we do with uh, Vitali at all. Um, we are pretty much with Helmut Berger all the way through this movie. And he is almost like... It's weird when I think of... He's, he's more like a terrorist than he is actually a criminal in that he is just hell-bent on vengeance and on-screen anarchy. Uh, from from the very opening scene where, they, where we have this prison break right to the very end of the movie, the man doesn't stop. Uh, there's a great scene that kind of identifies how much of his mania is on, on pure anarchy where he has an opportunity to kill Santini uh, and he refuses to do so. Instead, he guns down an old woman instead. And it's just that idea of anything which is appalling and over the top, Vitaly's there because he is the titular mad dog killer. Um, the story set out that he is wrongfully imprisoned, maybe? Uh, or he's set up to go to prison, maybe? Um, and he escapes to get vengeance. All I'm going to say is that if he wasn't much of a criminal beforehand, going to prison hasn't helped that, and it really didn't take much for that man to really commit to the role, uh, which he does with, with great glee and much gusto. Um, the film has some issues, uh, namely, it lingers a bit too much and quite literally on um, Helmut Berger's actions where, where it pertains to things like rape. Uh, now this movie is one of the older ones, so uh, you know we're, we're kicking around the 70s at this point, late 70s, and yeah, they can get, well, I'm going to say they can get away with that. They try to get away with a lot of that in the 70s. It hasn't really aged all that well in that respect, and some of it's a bit, a bit lurid in a way which is quite uncomfortable to watch. Um, Elmer Berger is not a great character at all. He's a great actor, but his his character of Vitaly is just the most reprehensible character you've seen in a while. And the the way the film is shot almost glorifies that. You know, we, we spend so much time almost with this romantic idea of this marauding killer that I don't understand. I don't understand the direction for that. I don't understand why we minimalise the the police involvement, which you would usually have in a movie like this, in favour of this, you know, anarchistic sort of killer. Uh, like I say, the comparisons there, where I think about it, are like the Joker from Batman. He really is this guy that just gets off on pure anarchy and um, pure terror. And uh, Vitaly is that guy. He is that kind of real-world example of, of a character like that. So the movie was directed by Sergio Greco, who kind of finished his career on this movie. This was the final movie that he actually made. Um, and in the period of about 30 years, he made 40 movies, which is fucking ridiculous. But once again, Italy. And that's what they did. And he closed out his career by doing this movie. So this was his kind of... Final Swan Song. He died within six years of making the movie, if memory serves. I'm sure I read somewhere that he died in 1982. Um, and this movie being 1977. And probably nowadays, um, the movie's most notably known for, and I didn't know this until I watched it, I was like, There's, I've seen, how have I seen this sequence before? Maybe it was in the trailer. Do a bit of search online, then of course, surprise, surprise, Quentin Tarantino uses scenes from this to play in the background. Um, in the TV 
uh, and Jackie Brown. So there's a scene where uh, Robert De Niro's character goes and meets um, Samuel L. Jackson's character, uh, and Bridget Fonda is watching the TV. Uh, and in the background, while Robert De Niro is kicking around, there is Mad Dog Killer, and there is a, a comment made about Helmut Berger looking like Rutger Hauer. So, yeah, so obviously Tarantino has seen this movie, which should surprise no one, uh, and his little nods of putting it in there should surprise no one, um, and shocked me when I was like, oh, that's where it's from, because Jackie Brown, favourite Tarantino movie of all time, love that movie. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, it's, it's most notable for that and probably swung quite a few cinephiles back in the day on a, on a quest to find out one what this movie was and two how to go and watch it um, but yeah I, I don't know this one I don't have a lot to I really don't have a lot to say about this movie at all I think I th I think if this was postured maybe more away from following just Helmut Berger all pretty much all the way through this movie I would I would be inclined to score it a bit higher but I found the camera to romanticize a bit too much of his actions and that's something I, I kind of take issue with especially when I don't know what the purpose of the movie is if it's a guy being wrongfully convicted that's wanting vengeance then yeah I'm cool with that but that doesn't justify the rape and carnage that the man does uh, or the glee that he seems to have he really is getting off on this violence, so I don't quite like that. Uh, on the flip side of that, I think if this movie didn't have Helmut Berger in that role, the movie would be borderline unwatchable. I just find that certain sequences were a bit tawdry, um, the camera lingered a bit too much on him walking stylishly from one place to another, or on a particular facial expression, and I, I didn't get that, and it feels on some level that the, the scales are not balanced here. Generally when you have this great arch criminal, you need a great arch hero. So Santini's character should be, you know, the most bitch and badass cop of all time, and he's not, he's a bit vanilla. He's a bit plain, a bit beige for a movie like this. And that in itself brings up issues. I mean, if you're going to have a great kind of criminal uh, cop playoff, a la something like Michael Mann's Heat, we need that on screen. We need equal screen time. We need uh, we need to pivot towards how Santini is, you know, going to bring down this guy. Bring, and we don't get that. He's, he's very much a uh, by-the-book cop and he doesn't really do anything to make him this risky, you know, criminal catcher or killer which I think causes issues overall in the movie. I think the score for the movie, which was done by, a, I want to say an Italian comedian slash composer, uh, is, is kind of awesome. It's very difficult to find if that's ever been formally released online. My inkling is it probably wasn't out with its original run back in 77. Uh, but the, you know, the sim tracks, it's cool, it fits the movie. Uh, it definitely gives it a bit of chic and a bit of style. Um, some of the shots, uh, the cinematography are, are absolutely wonderful in this movie. It really plays into that Italian landscape before you get into the kind of the heartlands, the big cities and stuff. Um, and I think that opens the movie up. It makes it feel a lot bigger than it actually is. And I really liked that. I think uh, the lunatic gang of which the synopsis speaks about get very little time at all. They're picked off in ways which you know, they're fodder for the, the cops or fodder for our criminals here. So we never really get to know them. This is really a Helmut Berger show. And like I say, he's great in the movie. He's, he's really good in the movie. I just don't like the actions of the character at all. And I don't... It's almost like there's a, a lack of a film or, or a storytelling, not filmmaking skill, because the filmmaking is great, but there's a lack of storytelling skill and how they pivot that to show that whilst we're spending a lot of time with this guy, ultimately, it's reprehensible, um, and there maybe needs a bit more of the grittiness in there, where at times certain shots, like I say, feel like it's almost glorifying what he's doing on the screen, and that's when I have to draw a line in the sand and say, I kind of take exception to this, I don't know if I like it. Um, so, yeah, I don't really have much to say, it's a weird one. I, I find this from time to time with the 88 Films collection, when we pivot into genres which I do have a kind of passing interest in, but not like a full interest in, I struggle to really verbalise much about it. If this is a horror movie, for example, I can fling out loads of comparisons to what is done right or wrong. And a movie like this, I can only compare it to other ones within the genre, and this one's a mid-level 
sort of police procedural Italian genre movie. Um, it's not a, it's not top tier at all. It does have great performances, but like I say, it has some serious issues that I certainly picked up on the view back for this one. Um, if I was to give it a grade, which I have to, um, it'd probably be a three. I think that's I, I liked it. I did not really like it or love it. Um, so it lands at a three. I imagine if I watch it again, it'll probably drop down to a two point five. But at the moment, I'm riding the crest of. Kind of, yeah, it's the first time watching. Yeah, I didn't hear it. So it's a three from me for this movie.